Live from Cambridge, Massachusetts, extracting the signal from the noise, it's The Cube, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and Information Quality Symposium. Now your hosts, Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen. Welcome back to MIT, everybody. This is Dave Vellante with Paul Gillen. We're here live in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and this is The Cube, SiliconANGLE Wikibon's continuous coverage of MIT IQ. This is our third year at this event. Arka McCurgy is here. He's a founder and CEO of Global IDs out of Princeton, New Jersey. Arka, welcome to The Cube. Pleasure, thanks for having me. So t tell us about Global IDs. What's the organization do? Why'd you, why'd you found the company? Uh, in 2001, I was struck by the problem of growing uh, complexity in data landscapes. So I was working in IBM and I was dealing with uh, these very complex problems that IBM was working with. And I kept saying that the software that we have is not smart enough to handle the problems associated with very large and very complex data ecosystems. So uh, I, at that point I decided to work on this problem. And so we've been at it for uh, more than a decade and uh, we are systematically addressing the problems uh, related to data ecosystems. So the problems are numerous. Um, there's obviously data quality, you know, consistency, uh, there's, uh, there's, there's governance, there's security, uh, this, this single version of the truth, master data management, all the stuff that we've been chasing, it's like chasing windmills. Yeah. Um, so maybe summarize the problem statement and uh, we can talk about what, which ones you've attacked and where the white space is. Wonderful. Uh, so we, we think that the, the way software has been created to handle data is somewhat dated. Uh, the, today's software is primarily based on the thinking that has been was done in the 1980s and the 1990s uh, related to these problems. In order to handle high volume, high co uh, complexity environments, we need a newer, uh, a better, smarter approach towards uh, uh, looking at data. So, so Global IDs is primarily interested in creating that uh, approach that actually works for the kind of volume, complexity, and diversity that we say face in current environments. So what are those? Uh, so we, we think that uh, there's a foundational understanding that's required for data, right? And that foundational understanding is based on discovery, profiling, and organizing these large ecosystems of data. And once you've built that foundation, you can actually solve the problems related to quality, governance, master data management, uh, security, privacy, because these are all problems uh, that are ecosystem level. They are not silo-based problems. They are all pro ecosystem problems. So, so we are uh, approaching the, this in a scientific way, and it's leading to a much more mature uh, uh, approach towards uh, solving these eco pro ecosystem problems. So you're, you're helping companies discover the data that they have, understand how it's structured, what it's there for, what it does, and then you and then you you sort of assemble this model of the organization based on its data. What do they then do with that? Right. So the organization of the data is the key problem. We think that that that's a missing foundation for most large organizations. If you go to, into, into any large organization and say ask simple questions like, "Can you give me an inventory of all your data assets?" Most organizations will say, will say that, no, we, we can't do that. We have isolated metadata repositories, but we don't really have a holistic understanding of our data assets. Or if you tell them, you know, do you have a, a semantic understanding of the way this data is being used to solve business problems? Uh, it's too large, it's outside my area, it's not in my business unit, et cetera. So the, there's an absence of a holistic understanding uh, of you know, of the ecosystem. So, uh, so our our premise here is that if you use software in an intelligent way, you can solve you know each of these problems related to the creation of the inventory, uh, the the profiling of the data, the recognition of the data, the classification, the mapping of the data. All these problems are actually tractable problems, and and that once you have that foundation, right, uh, you can now. It, once you have that foundation in an automated way, you can now 
tackle each of the problems that you want. So, for example, the issue of privacy. Most organizations should be able to tell us where all their private sensitive data is. But that's near impossibility these days when you have tens of thousands of databases. How do you know where all your sensitive data is? Well, you need this foundation that I was describing in order to really answer those questions. So this is a metadata challenge. It largely. is. So uh, Michael Stonebreaker today said MDM, Master Data Management, is really going to be a metadata management mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. issue. So is that the fundamental approach that, is, that you're taking? Can you yes. talk about that? So we do create the largest uh, metadata repositories in the world. Uh, these are at the scale of 100 million data assets. Uh, yeah, so, uh, so, and so we do agree that without comprehensive, holistic metadata, it's very hard to solve today's data problems. Right? And, and so Michael Stonebreaker is absolutely right, saying that uh, you, know, you need to create those foundations before you build smarter systems. So, and part of the other, the other part of the challenge is, you gotta, like you said, you, you, you ask a customer, what, you know, what data do you have? And they, you know, they can't tell you. So, there's a classification issue, which has been an age-old problem with data management, and the, the challenge is you, you can't manually classify data, it doesn't exactly. scale, and humans don't do a good job of it. Right. How is the industry solving that problem? Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent question, because we believe that nobody does this at scale, and that is uh, this organizing all this information that's coming our way is absolutely critical, right? So, uh, so, so if we look at large organizations and say, do you recognize all your data assets? So let's say, for example, you have uh, 100 million data assets, right? Do you recognize each one of them? So people will say, no, no, I, I, I give up. I, I couldn't possibly do that. Or, do, you know, can I classify these data assets into business categories? No, I can't do that either. Can I classify all this into master data objects? No, I can't do that either. Right? So the issue of classification and organization is central to any intelligent system, right? And what we are trying to do is to automate all of that to, by doing it through software. And we know we've done it at the scale of maybe about 70 million data assets. So we, th we know that the problem is tractable and that can, it can be solved. Can we talk about how you solve that problem for a minute? Absolutely. I mean, it's, because technology created the problem. Yeah. <laughs> yep. So we have all this data. And you're implying that technology can help us get out of this rut. Yes. Uh, how, like, talk through it. Is it agents placed everywhere and doing discovery and then using math to categorize? Is that right. the approach? Uh, it is. Uh, you're absolutely right. You have to take those approaches to solving the problem. Um, uh, Marvin Minsky at MIT in the 60s and 70s, he outlined how these classes of problems could be solved. So uh, you may be aware that uh, Marvin Minsky wrote a book called The Society of Mind, in which he said, in order to solve complex problems, you need to break it up, you need to reduce it into uh, small components, and then run millions of those agents in parallel in order to solve the problem, which is exactly the approach that we use. We essentially say that when an organization like an AT&T or a Walmart has uh, 100 million data assets, we need to have intelligent agents that can process each, uh, you know, all the different, the diversity of this data, and that, uh, so these uh, millions of agents can collectively collaborate in order to lead to a understanding of the ecosystem and an organization of the ecosystem that can be then processed. What, what do you find is most surprising to your customers when they go through this analysis process? Uh, it's it's the first of all the enormity of the challenge. The fa you know, everyone thinks that this is an impossible problem, but uh, we've done it at the scale of the largest organizations in the world. So the fact that it's a solvable problem is is the biggest aha. We un so at the end of the exercise, they say we understand all our data assets, right? We know how these data assets can be organized to improve our business. We understand what is redundant in the environment and what can be rationalized, right? And we know how to protect and secure 
the important part uh, of the data landscape. So, is, so do they typically find data that should be protected that, it, that isn't? Oh, absolutely. So, you, I mean, you identify security vulnerabilities as part of the service? Security vulnerabilities, privacy vulnerabilities. The privacy one is the most obvious one. You know, mm -hmm. the, you, the, the approach towards privacy these days is, you know, I'm going to interview all my application owners, I'm going to talk to my database owners and say, Give me a certificate saying that all your, your, your data is, uh, is your sensitive data is protected, and everybody does audits. And everyone passes the audits with flying colors, except when our system starts looking at it. When our system sort of reverse engineers the environment, all the holes, you know, they just pop right up because the software is the agents are saying that here's a sensitive data uh, area that the software can detect. So. so this is a data quality conference in part. What do you find is overall is the state of data quality in, in most of the companies that you work with when you first come in? Uh, I think it's terrible. Yeah, so, um, so when we look, we have about eight layers of functionality related to data quality, right? And what we say is, okay, how, yeah, can you, do we know all the rules the data quality rules that should be applied on the data in order to measure the data quality. Because if you are organizations that can understand data quality, everything should be measurable. Right? The data quality of all your data assets should be measurable. But we don't know anyone who does that. If When it is done, it is done in a very sparse way, right? for silos that are of importance. Nothing is done in an organized, systematic way. So, so we think that the two or three challenges related to this. The first problem is you must know all the rules, that uh, all the data quality rules that are uh, applicable to the data landscape. And because it is a large number of rules, you cannot do it manually. You have to automatically generate the rule set that governs data quality, number one. Number two, you must apply those rules Right? and create data quality metrics for each of your data assets to say this is the uh, this asset I trust and this asset I do not trust because the quality metric and the rules that have been run show that it has a poor metric right uh, so you must and do you that you have to do that at the point of creation or use correct that is right and you can't go back and do it after there's this big bog of data there you yeah that would mess up uh, all yeah. the history of the okay. system so you can't do it so the issue of lineage, is very cr critical. You have to actually trace back uh, across the ecosystem how um, information is originating and how it's flowing through the ecosystem. And then once you identify the origin of a problem, you actually fix it at that source so that uh, you know, when it flows downstream, everything is corrected. So the problem, you know, to summarize then, you must know all the rules you must uh, have all the data quality metrics, and you must have a cleansing mechanism that uses the lineage and traceability in order to s solve the problem. And we believe that the way ultimately that this should be done is in the, uh, on the basis of data quality controls. Right? That at the source, you have all the controls in place uh, such that these, the low quality data doesn't even enter the system or it's blocked at the, at the point of origination. So just like in the process area we have process control flows, uh, we should have data quality controls right at origin. So you've developed this software, this technology, um, it's, it sounds like the architecture is you've got a distributed mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. so data can stay in place. Mm -hmm. You're not shoving everything into mm -hmm. a single right. repository. Right. Uh, uh, and you've got a lot of math and algorithms mm -hmm. to allow you to auto-classify and uh, yeah. uh, 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 apply policies. It's a powerful technology and it's mm -hmm. unique. I mean, mm -hmm. you, not to pick on, no, I'm going to pick on them. Uh, uh, take a company like Autonomy, mm -hmm. who claims to have solved this problem, mm -hmm. even prior to the HP mm -hmm. acquisition, but essentially what Autonomy is doing is using search as a blunt instrument. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't scale, it doesn't, mm -hmm. the data quality is you know, not effective, but so, Am I mistaken? Is this not unique in, in the business? Uh, well, are there, uh, uh, it, it is fairly unique um, because these are hard problems and you need to spend at least a decade in order to think about these problems correctly. Right? And most software companies don't have the patience or the money uh, to uh, uh, attack these large problems. So we are fairly unique in the sense that we are attacking these very large problems and making sure that they are tractable. Where we differ from organizations like Autonomy 
is the sense that autonomy focused primarily using Bayesian logic on unclassified, uh, unstructured data environments. We, w we focus primarily on structured data environments and we, we use a combination of Bayesian and non-Bayesian uh, approaches towards solving the problem. And so you're a your private company. Yes. Uh, and how were you funded? Uh, so uh, when I came out of IBM, I stole, uh, I sold all my uh, uh, my stock in IBM, and that created the the seed fund. And uh, we started building out the software at that point. We 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 were self sufficient right from the beginning onwards. So you bootstrapped. We bootstrapped. Self funded. Self funded. Client uh, funded. Client funded. Uh, you know, st steep exponential uh, uh, growth. Uh, and uh, a very strong position in the market in tackling these very large uh, and complex problems. You've never so taken outside capital? We have never taken outside Not a dime? No. Really? That's, congratulations. How yeah. many, what's your headcount? We have about 100 people, uh, hopefully growing at 50% uh, kind of thing. 15? Five zero. Five 50? Yeah, yeah. In, in terms of, of people, uh, yeah. in terms of revenues, it's higher. So. Typically, how do your customers find out about you? Uh, we primarily operate through our channel partners. We don't have a very large uh, direct sales force. We will operate, we have partnerships with the large system integrators, and uh, they understand our value proposition and can explain it well uh, to end customers. Oh, so, so they already have the relationships with the, with the big customers. With the big customers, then they typically bring us in. So, you used to be at IBM. Mm -hmm. You have a partnership with IBM at all? Or? Well, you know, I mean, it, they have uh, been trying to solve this problem for forever. They, they have end. been. Again, they claim they do. Yes. But they don't. <laughs> well, I mean, they touch upon it, and they can integrate it, and they can bring in services. And but, but you're talking about a software-led solution mm -hmm. that scales. Yes. I've been uh, looking for this for since since the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure yeah, changed yeah. in 2006, and haven't found much. A couple yeah. of small companies that do some interesting things, but so the uh, so I, I think the implicit question over here is uh, who has the audacity to tackle these kinds of problems? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so certainly, uh, you know, organizations like IBM, Informatica, Oracle, A A HP, uh, Microsoft, yeah, they have the the wherewithal to tackle these problems. But when you're at the whims of a of market that uh, drives you on a quarter-based performance, you don't have the ability to take a 10-year problem and then attack it. So what you land up doing is to buy a whole bunch of, of uh, different companies and hope that they collectively solve the problem. But of course they don't, because all these pieces of, all these acquired companies were built for different purposes, they're never meant to work together, they were never en meant to solve these uh, large-scale ecosystem problems. Uh, so that's one category of, of uh, organizations that can tackle the problem. The other uh, set of organizations are the small, innovative organizations. But typically those organizations don't have a, a large runway because they run short of money and they go to a VC who wants to, uh, you know, who wants to get exit. an exit in three yeah. years. And then you, they can't solve the problem either. So you, you have to have a, a, a long runway in order to solve these problems, and you have to have the patience to make all the mistakes uh, before you can solve the problem. So you need people with patience you know, and uh, and uh, just uh, a, a, a drive to actually be interested in solving the problem. So we find ourselves in, uh, in, in a category like that, and of course many of the companies uh, you know, who we are here with at MIT display some of those characteristics as well. But we believe that you know we have a good solution, and we've we've established that the problem is tractable. You know that it can be solved. Uh, previously, many of these problems were perceived to be intractable at the scale that we are working. Are you working primarily with structured data or with unstructured data as well? Well, so if you if you think of our agent-based system, the agent-based system can handle any kind of data. It can handle structured data, unstructured data, big data, doesn't matter, right? And it's uh, it's flexible because you can create an agent for any particular uh, uh, any uh, any particular incarnation of the data. So wherever uh, the data lives, the data that's is. the beauty of it, right? Yeah. Data is distributed, and you're yeah. saying you can handle that. Sorry to interrupt, but no, yeah. absolutely right. So, so with that in mind, yeah, with that in mind, we are we have to focus on where our revenue comes from, 
right? So most of the revenue has come from large enterprise companies and their problems are usually related to structured data. So that causes us to focus on structured data, but there's no, the platform itself has flexibility to tackle uh, uh, diversity in real world environments. Do you find these companies even know where all their data is? No. I can't imagine they do. They, they don't, and so it, uh, as Michael Stonebreaker was saying, it requires, uh, it requires two kinds of events to happen. One is it requires a, a strong leadership to say, if we are an information company and we value our information, there is a, a need to understand our whole inventory and understand uh, you know, uh, how to work with information better. So if a mandate comes from the top, it works. Right? The other option is if there's a problem. Right? So let's say the target example, where you know you have somewhere from the ecosystem, some data has leaked out. Right? How do you deal with that? So a catastrophe often says that I need to know, you know, how, how all of this is working. And so those are the two situations that bring us in. Excellent. All right. Well, listen. Thanks very much, Arka, for coming on the Cube. It's a great story. Uh, good luck. You know, yeah. and please keep in touch. Let us know the progress. Pleasure. Thanks for having me. On All the right. Show. Keep right there, everybody. We'll be back to wrap up MIT IQ. This is the Cube. Right back.